You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it, you got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out, basic to complex. This is Options Bootcamp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, the Options Bootcamp drill instructors will break it all down for you. Now, let's get you into peak options trading shape. Here are your Options Bootcamp drill instructors, All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again for Options Bootcamp, the premier options educational program here, holding court on yet another fun education Wednesday. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the optionsinsider.com, as well as from the ever exciting, ever educational, at least we tend to think so. Options Insider Radio Network. Remind you a couple of things here at the top of the show. First off, if you're just listening to OBC, hey, we love you, but you're missing out on, man, quite a bit of content over there on the rest of the network. So wherever you're getting this, make sure you upgrade to get the full network. That'll get you OPR. In fact, I'll Brian join me a little bit later to do a pro Q&A with our pro members in a little bit. And of course, all the other shows we do, Option Block. The Advisors Options did that yesterday with Matt. That's a great show. Volatility Views, Crypto Rundown, This Week in Futures Options, all sorts of fun stuff. So if you want to explore this here crazy thing called options from all different facets, the main network is the place to go. Of course, if you like what you hear this show or the rest of the network, do throw a few stars our way. One billion plus contract month last month. Busiest month in the history of the business. More people are trading options than ever in history. So clearly more people are beating a path to our door. If you want to help that process along, help guide them in the right direction, throw some stars on your platform, just like our friend Dave, just Dave, no crazy handle did this week. He said they should post this show on every broker that allows options trading. It would save people and brokers a lot of money. Well, thank you, Dave. We agree. It should be on every options broker out there. It would save people a lot of cash, especially some of those newcomers to the option space or maybe are a little light on the education and the functionality and everything else. We'll get to all that fun in a little bit. But first, let me welcome on my compatriot in the land of options boot camp, none other than the black-hatted one himself, Mr. Dan Passarelli from Market Taker Mentoring, what the cool kids call mm to um Mr. P, welcome back to the show. How go things in the land of mm to um Hey, man, things are going fantastic over here, my friend. Uh, welcome back to uh, Civilization. Yes, out of the Southern Studio, back, ready for action, ready for some options boot camping. Got my drill instructor hat on and my whistle. Do you have your drill hat and your whistle, sir? I most certainly do. All right, because it is time for a little bit of the old options drills. Holy moot! Time for our favorite pastime, option drills. We're going to take the strategies learned during the show and teach you how they can be employed to achieve a specific objective. Do you hear me? Yes, sir! All right, everybody. Welcome to everyone's favorite pastime. It's mine. I hope it's yours. It's options drills where we... Take some concepts and explore them in a little bit more detail here on the show. Maybe tell you how we utilize them, how we view certain things in the world of options. That's the lens we're going to take 
for this week's segment. Kind of somewhat inspired by Dave's comments there about how he thinks every broker should have this show on their platform. That's obviously fun. It's obviously hyperbolic. Not going to happen. But it got me thinking, you know, what should brokers have? on their platforms at the end of the day. And so it got me thinking that might be a good subject for a little bit of the old options drills. Maybe you're new to the world of options. Maybe you've been doing this for a little bit and you're thinking about changing brokers. Either way, what features should you really be looking for in an options broker? I'm going to get Dan's thoughts in a second. But first, I want to lay this out there. At the front, I do believe Dan will agree with this as well, that your first stop, your first goal, your first driving factor when choosing a broker should not be commissions. You should not race out and say, oh, this person is the lowest cost provider in this space. I shall route my capital to them. Post haste. That's what we saw a lot of, especially in the early days of the meme stock Palooza, Robinhood, a lot of the other newer entrants to the space really leaned on the free or free-esque when it comes to options. Nothing's really free when it comes to options. There is a cost, but lower cost at the end of the day. I'm not saying you can't look for a deal. That's always a good thing. You don't want to get gouged at the end of the day, but you don't want to make your priority when you're looking for a broker the commissions because oftentimes when it comes to platforms and brokers, you are going to get what you pay for. That adage does hold true in the brokerage space. And so... Running, screaming towards the first ridiculous, I can't believe it's this cheap deal, means you may have some buyer beware lurking for you a little bit down the road. Dan, would you agree with that first caveat there? You shouldn't make all of your brokerage decisions around commissions. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, I mean, the way I look at it is your trading enterprise is a business in and of itself. And you have to think, you do have to think about expenses, but you also have to think about, um, you know, your revenues and what gets you to those revenues. You know, if you're manufacturing some stuff, you need to pay to build a high quality factory, you know, and um, there are certain tools and machines that you need to run your option trading business. And that stuff's way, I mean, Commissions are important, but that stuff's way more important than commissions. All right, Mr. P, I'm sure you get this question all the time. Let's pretend I'm a new mentee walking into the hallowed halls of um to um, and I sit down at my desk. I have my pencil in hand. I'm taking notes, and I say, Professor AP. <laughs> That's what they all call you, right? <laughs> Professor AP over there. I say, Professor AP, what should I be looking for? When I choose my first options broker, what would you say to me, sir, as I'm eagerly taking notes of my number two pencil? That's what kids do today, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, well, the, the, the tools that you need in order to be able to make the trades that you need to be able to make. That's, that, to me, that's priority number one. Now, you know, notwithstanding that there are you know, third party platforms out there that might provide some of this for you. But we need to have we need to have the right uh, number one on my priority list is we need to have the right tools. To enable us to be able to make the right decisions. That's number one. Yes, I I definitely agree with that when I'm looking at brokerage and brokerage platforms. A couple of things I like to keep in mind, I think for a lot of you would serve you well. Obviously, first and foremost, don't be driven by commissions. They should be a factor in your overall analysis, but they should not be the primary factor. At the end of the day, you're listening to a show like this. You are or you want to be an options trader. So robust options functionality really needs to be job number one when you're looking for an options broker. So That meant back in the day, in the early days of the options online scene, you were leaning towards an options-centric broker like the old Options Expresses or Tosses or even IBs and the modern incarnations we've seen Tasty and others kind of pop up that are very much geared around the options product. And if you are an options-first trader, then that is definitely a way you want to go. Obviously, the old OXs have been gobbled up and the Tosses. Most of those platforms are now 
acquired and integrated into other larger, more multi-asset platforms, TD, Schwab, all kind of coming together as the one juggernaut Leviathan out there with effectively three or four options platforms <laughs> under under their own roof now. So there's a lot of mixing and matching going on there. But in general, that was always a good guidepost going towards an option centric broker because they're built around what you want to do. You traditionally don't want to do, and that is, this is still the case now, is going to a broker that is more of a legacy, traditional, let's say, stock broker. And then they're going to tack on the options functionality as a bit of an afterthought. And these are brokers you could usually see when you go into these platforms. You could usually see it right away. The robust options functionality simply isn't there. One, one quick way to look is just, Look around their platform. How easy, how readily accessible are the options changed? If they're buried in a submenu of a submenu, they're really hard to access. They're not top of mind, front and center, one click away. Then you could probably readily assume that maybe this broker wasn't built around the product that I'm looking for. So that's job number one. How easy is it to find the options chains? A good barometer of how good your options experience is going to be on that platform. Then once you find them, there's a lot that goes into what they display there. Are these chains easy to navigate? When you look at the chains, you know, what are you seeing? Obviously, aside from just call and put prices, if you click on an option on that chain, what is your broker displaying to you? Is it just showing you pretty much the high and low prices for the day or do they get more involved? Are they going to show you your Greeks, your Gamma, Delta, Theta, Vega, all that fun stuff? Now, obviously, those are not end-all, be-all Greeks. Everyone's Greeks are going to be a little bit different depending on how you look at things. But it's a good ballpark, a good frame of reference for you to work with as you're analyzing options. So just some initial functionality you should definitely be looking for. Dan, you mentioned tools are a big part of the equation for you. When you're looking for tools and that sort of functionality, what are you looking for? Yeah, so um, first of all, you hit it right on the head You know, with the Greeks. We want to be able to integrate the Greeks and volatility into the option chain, uh, which is important. And if you have an option-centric broker, you know, if they want options customers, uh, they, sh they should do that because all option traders really should have their option chain set up with implied volatility, Delta, Theta, and Vega in there. Um, so that's Tool number one, um, certain technical analysis tools become really, really helpful. Uh, you know, if you use, uh, I don't know, I can't think of an example, uh, Elliott Wave or some, I guess that's pretty ubiquitous these days. But, you know, if you use a certain type of indicator, but they have a really clunky charting platform and Either they don't have that indicator or it's just too hard to find or it's too hard to use the way you like to use it. Um, you know, not good. Um, being able to scan and 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 search for trades meeting certain criteria becomes really important. And the most oh geez. I'm like just thinking here of um all the various things that I use. I'm like staring at my platform and like blatant obvious number one thing is a really really robust um risk profile risk graph or p and l diagram to be able to use a, you know look at a p and l diagram and the greeks of your trades i mean you i i don't even make an option trade without modeling it out first looking at the break evens getting an idea of the most I can lose and most I can make and, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, geez, what else? I don't know. There's, you know, there's even more things on my list. Well, you mull over some, I'll throw in some of my own recommendations, give you time for the yeah. butter to churn over yeah. there in Frankfurt, sir. There are a lot of things to look for. Obviously the chains first and foremost, that's a good way to start and navigate. I'm glad you mentioned risk assessment. That is something I want to get to in a second, but first, but some of the other functionality you should be looking for out there and, and a good barometer of how good your experience is going to be as an options trader is basic stuff like the trade ticket. When you go beyond that options chain, you found your options chains now. That's job number one. You like how they're laid out. They're showing you a decent amount of information. 
it's readily accessible. You think this is a good experience I'm having here so far. You click on the change there, the trade ticket pops up. That's the next step. You're going to be using that a lot. How easy is that trade ticket to use? Does it auto populate with a lot of the information you want when you're clicking on an option? Let's say something basic like clicking on the bid on a put. Does it pop up that, oh, okay, you're looking to sell this item or do you have to manually enter that? That's a pretty annoying thing if it's the latter, but also shows you that their options wherewithal as a broker, maybe not up to snuff. Also, do they have a nice drop down in that trade ticket auto populated with a bunch of common option strategies, butterflies, verticals, condor straddles, whatever, all of the big ones there. So if you select those, it'll auto populate with some reasonable strikes. And then how easy is it to adjust those strikes? Because often, if let's say you're doing a butterfly, if you're like me, you don't want your standard symmetrical. That's what it's going to populate. It's going to populate one of those standard symmetrical flies around at the money. You don't want that. You want to adjust it. Maybe you want a broken wing fly, like we were talking about a couple of weeks ago, or as Brian prefers to call them, the skip strike flies. You want to skip a few strikes. How easy is it to adjust that? So definitely play around with that trade ticket a little bit uh, to make sure. If you have to manually enter all of your trades Forget about that. That's that's you don't want to do that. And especially we talk a lot about graduating to spreads. Their spread functionality is it baked into the core trade ticket? Will it auto populate? How easy is it for you to tweak and customize those trades? That's a big part of the equation. Dan mentioned some of the risk management. That is also a big part of the equation. Your broker just show you your positions in a big portfolio, and that's kind of it. And all you made or lost this much today. Or can you get more into the weeds with it? Can you look at this position and model it a little bit? Do some basic modeling saying, okay, uh, what happens to this options position if the underlying moves and adjust the underlying and see what happens as a result? What happens if the volatility changes? Some of the other Greeks change. Can you play around with those as well and see what happens? Uh, These are some very basic considerations that are very useful when you're looking at something saying, I don't know why I'm losing money here. I don't know why I'm making money here. Good problem to have, but something you want to get to the bottom of. These are all very robust things that will make your trading experience better, more streamlined, and more successful at the end of the day. Dan, uh, you mentioned you had some more you wanted to add on. What else should people be looking for with their options brokers? Yeah, you know, uh, a couple other things that I thought of, you know, just a good, um, like, monitor tab is is what it is in thinkorswim you know just being able to eyeball my entire portfolio see my portfolio greeks and and customize that be able to um get a just just get a good simple one you know one eyeball snapshot of of your entire portfolio is really useful like here, let me tell you a story. Uh, I when I, I used to just trade and run uh, the MTM Empire on my, just a laptop, and you know people are like, "You don't have any external monitors?" I'm like, "Huh, yeah." And then one day, I decided to get an external monitor. So now I've got three monitors and just bought. I, I run it on a Mac and so also just got a PC with another monitor. So I've got like just I'm surrounded here by screens. And, you know, you think about it. Not only do I have my platform open constantly, but I also have it like an entire uh, Google Chrome, you know, series of tabs of a whole bunch of other things that I need that have the right information with different platforms on web-based platforms on them. And then on my PC, I'm running, you know, other, um, platforms that I need. And man, the more things that I can just keep within one single platform, the better, you know, you kind of like, I want to Marie Kondo my whole trading, um, you know, thing. If I could just, get rid of all these other monitors and just have everything all in one place that like, that's my real wish list. But, um, what I have, I, I have, I have most, I have most of that in there. Now, you know what another really useful thing is, is, um, being eight, like there are some platforms out there that enable you to write some scripts, like, 
if you want to do a very, very specific scan and look at things a very, very specific way, being able to use your own scripts basically to create your own indicators, if you will, that is also a fantastic tool. Um, I, you know, I, I've got more and I keep thinking of more as we go along, but I figure I'll pass the baton back to you here for a minute. Yeah, it's almost an endless, an endless list, right? But we're trying to curtail it here, listeners. Obviously, the focus of this show is education. That's something else you should be looking for in your options broker, especially if you're on the newer end of the spectrum. You want a broker that can help explain these things to you. Hey, we're here for you. You got 100 plus episodes for you, but you always want more education. Your broker should have a robust educational offering, whether it's webinars, whether it's tutorials, whether it's content, whether it's all of the above. They should have a bunch of that readily available for you and more coming all the time. You should be able to sign up for different events with them all the time. And if they don't, then chances are you're at one of the low cost providers. And that's one of the things you're not getting with your paying for. And you probably should look elsewhere because you want someone who can help you navigate these troubled waters out there. And they are pretty crazy, pretty turbulent out there. Luckily, a lot of brokers have have wised up to that. We used to have Fidelity on the network for years. They have a pretty deep bench now in terms of people out there providing webinars and events and education, uh, TD through all their various platforms that they've acquired. And they have the TD network. There's a lot of educational content uh, there. Uh, Tasty, of course, does a lot of content out there. IB, surprisingly, not known for their handholding, but they just launched their IB campus. So that's kind of surprising. So even IB, kind of the most reticent player in the game when it comes to handholding basic traders, realize there is a use case for education at the end of the day. So you want to be at a platform, at a broker that provides that type of content for you, especially if you're newer to the game. If you're a little bit more seasoned, a little bit more experienced, maybe you can make do with a streamlined platform. Then you better be leaning on shows like this or on services like Dan's. You need some sort of educational outlet in your life. And if your platform doesn't offer it, You should look elsewhere. The flip side of education is, of course, support. Do they have enough experienced options personnel on hand to answer your questions? When you call them up and say, hey, what happens to my options positions in this crazy corporate action? Can they answer that question? Do they even know what the hell you're talking about? If you're at one of the legacy brokers that was mostly a stockbroker that kind of tacked on options as an afterthought, chances are the answer is probably no, and you want to look elsewhere. I mentioned IB adding the campus. The reason I was so surprised at that is because they've always been notorious for having some of the worst customer support, customer service in the game. They don't want to hold your hand. That's an expense to them. They don't want to waste money on time on that. So you want to be at a broker, especially if you're newer to the game. And again, a lot of our listeners to this show are that has good support. Now, that's something that's difficult to analyze from the outside. You may have to go on a message board or two and kind of get some people's flavors. Be aware of the negative Nancy's floating on out there. Usually there's a lot of negative posts because people had some problems. Try to sift through those, get some real feedback. But unfortunately, that's the kind of thing you can really only evaluate once you have a problem. So maybe you get a little bit proactive when you start up with the broker. A good, a good sign they have a deep options bench is that they have a lot of that educational content that we're talking about earlier. Someone has to be producing that, right? So chances are that's someone on their trade team. And then beyond that, if you want to engage with them, do a little bit of sampling of their support where so when you do have a problem, you're good to go. But that's definitely something to keep an eye on. Other advanced functionality, we kind of mentioned a p and I wouldn't even put that in advance. I would put that in more basic functionality. You want to be able to track your risk and everything else like that in a variety of market conditions. Beyond that, more advanced stuff. Can you look at your SKU levels? Uh, you know, some very option-centric brokers like let's say LiveVol will let you do that sort of thing. They were built with an options market maker in mind. So you could dive deep into your SKU levels and everything else. Other times, other brokers, you need to have external tools, more like a trade alert, some of the other things out there, quick strike on the futures options side to see what's going on from a SKU perspective. Can you configure your own option scans for things like unusual activity? We get a lot of questions about that. And that's still a difficult thing for a lot of platforms. Toss has some decent scanning functionality out there. In fact, you might argue some of it is is overdone in terms of what they let you do. You can get really deep into the weeds and confuse the hell out of yourself (laughs) at the end of the day if you're a newcomer. But they do offer that robust level of functionality. Others, the scanning is going to vary out there, which at the end of the day is important functionality. It helps in the idea generation at the end of the day. So more of them should offer it. Unfortunately, 
it's not quite there yet. Another thing that's important, but very difficult to really accurately gauge is execution quality. I see this in our chat here. I see Nickel saying, I like cheap, but I go for the tools and the execution first. Tools, very important. Execution, that's a bit of an enigma at the end of the day. It's kind of hard to measure. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say for the lion's share of you out there who are coming in doing a lot of very basic single leg options trades, maybe some basic verticals, execution quality isn't really going to be that big of a deal. You're primarily going to be trading in some of the bigger, more liquid names anyway. You have the NBBO. You can hit it with a pretty good expectation of getting filled. If you work inside it, you're probably going to get some sort of price improvement, probably a decent chance of being filled. So for the lion's share of you, it's probably not going to be a big deal. When you start expanding into the multi-leg spreads, that is where this will become an issue. And this will vary broker to broker because every exchange, I should say, has their own spread book, where your broker routes your spread to, and then how willing they are to move that spread order if it lines up at a different spread book at a different exchange. These are all things you can really only discover via trial and error, but they are very important. If you're sitting there with a butterfly order and you're saying, wait, hey, this lines up, I should be filled. And you look and see your order was routed to, let's say, I don't know, NASDAQ, and it's really bid somewhere else on the SIBO. Will your broker make that adjustment? Will they move that order? These are things that you can only really discover with time. Or again, dig into the message boards a little bit, see what people say about that sort of thing. But that's only for a small subset of you. I think for a lot of you, execution quality is really not going to be that big of an issue. If you really want to dig into it, you can go look at the best execution reports for your broker. But a lot of this stuff's going up in Apple and around the NBBO and SPY, and that's not really going to be an issue. Mr. Dan, what are your thoughts on that? Anything else you want to add in there, sir? Yeah, you know, um, um, one thing is the quality of the data, because I have been on some platforms in the past where, you know, just some of the some of the Greeks don't make sense or like or maybe the charting or the volatility charts don't make any sense. Um, And and that is I'll tell you what. That's one of the reasons why I really like Thinkorswim. Uh, and and they're, they're not the only platform that I use, but they, they are what, one of my go-to platforms, maybe my go-to platform. And the real main reason there is the quality of the data. I know that if I'm looking at a chart, it's almost always going to be right. I know that if I'm looking at the Greeks, you know, unless it's expiration day, they get wonky then no matter what platform you're using, they're going to be pretty accurate. Um, and I know where to go and toggle, um, you know, ways to change the volatility skew and all that. Um, you can't like, even if you have the best tools, if the data going into those tools is bad, they're not useful. You're not going to be able to make good decisions with them. It does seem like for a lot of people out there, Toss has come to be kind of the safe choice. It offers a little bit of everything under the sun. <laughs> it is one of these <laughs> platforms that has grown through acquisition. They have a lot of functionality buried there. So you could do worse, obviously, than, than choosing Toss out there. Again, they're not a sponsor, no plug. <laughs> we just tell you what we see out there, listeners, at the end of the day. One, a couple other miscellaneous things. And these will kind of depend on your use case, how important they are to you. But uh, mobile functionality is becoming more and more important to a lot of people out there. What is your use case for a broker? Are you primarily going to be doing it, let's say, on the go during your day job? You're a teacher or a hospital worker or whatever the heck else you are, and you mostly can only interact during market hours on your phone? Well, then the mobile app is going to be a big part of your experience. You want to make sure that's robust. And it's not a platform that offers a very streamlined, stripped down experience on the mobile side. I'll give you, uh, I'll give you a taste. I'll give you an example. We have a lot of different accounts that we manage here. Let me try to get an experience of a bunch of different brokers so we can see what's going on out there. One of them is an old legacy IRA through an old, primarily equity-based broker that has tacked on some options functionality, and they've also been acquired since then. And they're still a pretty legacy equity broker, and I don't like them at all. They're not really an option-centric place. All the things I talk about, accessibility of the chains, what do they show you when you click on those chains? They fail all those tests. I'm probably going to switch it away. I just, I've kept it out of the hopes that they may improve and also that we can see what some of the bad functionality is out there. 
And I had an order. I was working in an options trade. And I pulled up the mobile app because I wanted to change it. And they don't even have that functionality. You can't change an order in the mobile functionality. So you're kind of just stuck with this order. I couldn't even cancel it. I had to get out of the app. I had to go into the mobile browser, go into desktop mode. So I thought I was on a desktop, log into the website that way, and then make the change to the order. So that's atrocious. You do not want to be in an experience like that. So if you are a primary mobile first user, then you definitely need to bang away on that mobile app first. Make sure it's up to snuff for what you need it to do. Uh, Dan, you concur with that? You got any horror stories you want to share? And any other, we've already filled up a full episode. We probably could go for two on this topic. But yeah. uh, any things you want to share with our listeners before we drop off for this week, sir? Oh, man, we covered a good amount of stuff. Yeah, I didn't even think about the mobile app aspect to it. Um, you know, like, I mean, here, it, and you mentioned a really good point is that, um, you know, you look at various platforms and it, it is a pain in the butt to learn a new platform, but it's really not a bad idea if you can find the time to to try out different ones every now and then, you know, maybe once a quarter, once every six months. If you hear another platform is good, try it out. See if you like it. And the the most important thing, and I say this to all our students all the time, trading is personal. You're You're going to trade differently than any other trader. And so... Just make sure that the platform does the things that you need. And if it does, that's what you need. And if it doesn't, then maybe consider looking elsewhere. Yes, that's one thing all the brokers have done a good job of now. They've made it very easy for you to route your money to them (laughs) and away from another broker. So if you want to change, and I agree with Dan, you should be keeping an eye on the competition. You shouldn't be locked in to a a certain broker. Again, I keep that some of my legacy ones around because I like to see what all the different offerings are out there. So when you folks hit us up about broker X, Y, or Z, we have some experience with them. So we have a very specific use case. You folks don't. So you should be eyeing all the latest bells and whistles. And if you have a broker that's not giving you what you want, or we didn't even get into things like margin and other things like that. Again, for a lot of our audience of this show, not really a big issue. You start getting accounts over 100,000 and start getting into some other types of trading. Margin becomes a factor as well. But if your broker doesn't have these things we're talking about, the robust functionality, maybe the good mobile app, maybe the good support, or any of the other things we're talking about, the good risk management, maybe it's time to look elsewhere. You should not be afraid to do it. It is very easy to migrate your capital these days. It's really just a few clicks of a button. So you should be willing to do that. Vote with your dollars at the end of the day. If your broker isn't giving you the experience what you want, get the heck out of Dodge. There are many others out there that you can consider. All right, Mr. Dan, that was a fun one. We probably can go for a couple hours on that topic. I'm sure we'll get a bunch of email and we'll have many more segments on this topic, sir. (laughs) A good refresher for now, a good starter for the conversation. Before we go, Mr. P, if folks want to reach out to the professory themselves and see what you got cooking, where should they go? What should they do? Sure. Head on over to markettaker.com, two T's in a row, and, um, you know, join our join our community. You are welcome there. Um, here you get to listen to me and Mark, and it's sort of like one directional. It's us talking to you. But if you join the Mark Taker community, you get to be part of the conversation as well. You can get access to our chat room for free uh, for a limited time here. So... Check it out. We'd love to have you. There you go. Check them out. MTM. I should be checking out our own chat more. I got so busy talking about this stuff. I mentioned Nichols. Also, Options Queen was mentioning. She says, cost efficient is good as long as the other stuff works. Well, yeah, (laughs) that's definitely key. If all the other stuff works, then you can add cost into the equation. But it should definitely not be the primary variable that you are making your brokerage decision around. That said, listeners, tell us your thought process as you're evaluating brokers. How did you choose the broker that you use. If you want to share which broker you use, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine as well. You just want to give us your thought process for how you evaluated, maybe why you switched from broker X to broker Y, what you're really looking for out there, maybe some hidden features that you think people should be looking for. There's an endless well of things that I'm sure you want to discuss on this topic. So send it to us at options on most major social media platforms. Questions at theoptionsinsider.com also works. You can head on over to the pro, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro and all that stuff. We'll be waiting for you there, and you can, of course, get into the the fun commentary we have going here and heckle Dan live on the show. What's better than that? Speaking of live, if you're in the pro, 
strap in. We got another episode coming at you right now. Otherwise, we'll see you back here next week. Another episode of Options Bootcamp. Stay safe out there. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.